Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named and sorting taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which teaches you bit manipulation. Specifically, we will be exploring how we can use the AND bitwise operator in order to solve this problem. And we will also be exploring how we can sort an array by performing swap operations. And this concept of swapping elements in order to sort the array is a very frequent greedy idea. So in this problem, we are basically given a permutation of n integers, each integers from 0 through n minus 1. And the permutation is initially not sorted. We need to sort the permutation by performing swap operations. And the permutation is called x sortable. If we choose some non-negative integer x and we can swap two indices i and j, if and only if pi and pj is equal to x, where x is this um, number uh, which makes the permutation x sortable. Now we need to find out the maximum value of x such that the permutation is x sortable. And that basically means we need to find out what is the maximum value of x which, which we choose such that we can sort the array by performing swap operations where we swap indices i and j if and only if pi and pj is equal to x exactly equal to x. And it can be shown that there always exists some x such that p is x sortable. And this particular value of x, uh, one example could be a value such as 0 because pi and pj can be equal to 0 um, when, when there are no common bits basically. And if you look at the bitwise structure, you can see that the 0 value is could be a possible value of x as that p is x sortable. However, it will not always be the case because if you notice, if pi and pj has a value which is positive, then, then we can't swap pi and pj because it's not exactly equal to x. So we need to be a bit careful and let's try to look at a few examples to understand which values of x work. So let's take the first example where we have four integers 0, 1, 3, 2. So in this example, where the array is 0, 1, 3, 2, let's try to first eliminate those variables, those indices, which are already in the correct position. So 0 and 1 are already in the correct position, so we don't need to swap them. And that's the first observation. We should not swap elements which are already in the correct, in, in the correct positions. So don't swap numbers which are already in the correct position in the sorted array. And this basically means that we can ignore the elements where pi is equal to i. So pi is equal to i when i is 0 and 1. That's why we can ignore these elements and we will not swap those numbers. And the condition is pi is equal to i. So when this condition is met, we just ignore the elements. However, for the remaining elements, in this case, there are only two remaining elements. So we need to swap them and we need to swap the remaining elements with each other. Now, the second observation where we need to swap the remaining elements with each other is what we'll be focusing on. And we'll be figuring out how exactly we need to swap the remaining elements in order to put them in the correct positions. And in this case, when there are only two elements which, we need, which need to be swapped, uh, obviously we just need to swap those two. So the value of x is equal to two and three. And you can verify that's one or that's two actually. So the value is two and three, which is two. So we will print two as the output uh, in the in the first example. And uh, this is because we want to maximize the value of x. That's why we should. So the reason why the first observation is correct is because we want to maximize x. So uh, if you want a small proof, uh, we need to maximize x. And that's why. Notice that whenever we do an AND operation, we are always decreasing and a AND operation, a bitwise AND operation, always decreases x further. That's why we should not keep ANDing x. We should minimize the number of times which we are ANDing x. And um, that's why we should basically just ignore the elements which are already in the correct positions and we should not involve them in the swaps. We should only involve the remaining elements in the swaps in order to place them in their correct positions. So armed with these two observations, let's look at the remaining examples and let's try to see if there's a pattern 
of some sorts. In the second example, the pattern is clear when we notice that 1 and 0 need to be swapped with each other. And hence, again, the answer is 1 and 0, which is equal to 0. Now, in the third example, um, when we have the array 0, 1, 2, 3, so the first uh, four positions from 0 to 3 are already fixed. So we should ignore them. We should only consider the remaining three positions, which are 5, 6, and 4. So the indices are 4, 5, and 6. So in the sorted array, we need it to be 4, 5, and 6. But in the current array, the actual values are 5, 6, and 4. That's why we need to add some of these uh, uh, values. We need to swap some of these values. And the key observation is that in order to swap these values, you will need to basically do something like you need to first, uh, you, you need to move 5 to the position over here. So you will need to swap 5 and 6, which will give this x value. And you also need to swap, after you swap 5 and 6, you need to swap 4 and 6. And essentially, uh, what you are doing is you are swapping 5 and 6, uh, and then you are swapping 4 and 6. That's one possibility. The other possibility is when you swap 4 and 6 first, and then you swap 5 and 6. But in either way, uh, e either way you are going to get the same, uh, almost the same value of x. And you, since you want to maximize the value of x, um, but you have a constraint on the value of x, x can't be greater than the minimum of these two. So you pick whichever one is smaller. So actually by swapping 5 and 6 and then swapping 4 and 6, you will notice in both cases the value of x is 4 uh, if you do the math using a calculator. And uh, hence in, in both cases when you need to swap the elements, the value of x remains equal to 4. So we will print the value of x as 4. And in the last example where we have this array, we can ignore the 0th element. We can ignore the, uh, we need to swap the first, second and third elements and we can ignore the fourth element. So these elements need to be swapped. Now again, when we need to swap these elements, uh, we know that we need to swap 3 and 2. So the bitwise and is 2. However, when you swap 2 and 1, the bitwise and uh, is 0. Now if you consider the last example, where we have the array as 0, 3, 2, 1, 4, then notice that the 0th element, the second element and the fourth elements are already in the correct position. So we ignore them and we only need to swap the first and third elements. And that's why the value of x is 1 and 3, which turns out to be equal to 1. So that's why we'll print 1. In general, let's try to find out a manner in which we can find out what is the value of x. So the idea for the algorithm will arise from the second observation and the first observation actually. First observation basically tells us to ignore all the elements which are already in the correct observation, uh, correct position. And the second observation is what is uh, actually really important. And it basically tells us that since we need to swap the remaining elements, we can and we want to maximize x. However, x cannot be greater than the and of all the elements which are not in the correct position. Um, basically, we need to ensure that x is equal to the and of all the elements not in the correct positions. And the final answer for what the value of x is, uh, is the and of all the elements not in the correct positions. And let's try to understand exactly why this is true, why just setting x to be the and of all the elements not in the correct positions will give a correct value of x. So the reason why this value of x is correct is because x should be a submask of pi, pg, and basically all the values uh, of whenever you're swapping the array, whenever you're swapping the elements in the array pi and pg, x is actually a submask of both of them because of how um, the AND operation works. And submask basically means that x is a subset or if you consider uh, a number consist, if you consider a binary number, then a submask is basically something which has all zeros where the zeros are there, and uh, it has ones and some zeros at the places where ones are there. Basically, whenever there's a zero in the bigger mask, there should be a zero in the submask, 
and whenever there's a one in the bigger mask, there could be a zero or there could be a one in the sub in the sub mask. So uh, that's basically what a sub mask or a subset is. And since X should be a sub mask of all the swapped elements, you can just uh, set X to be the bitwise AND of all the swapped elements because then you're ensuring that X is a sub mask of all the swapped elements. And uh, it could actually become smaller than this, but since we want to maximize, uh, we want to maximize X, that's why we set it to be the bitwise AND of all of all the elements so that ensures that x remains like within within the bitwise and of all the elements and another way to look at this is the min operator so if you look at the min operator you will see that if you look at each bitwise position if you look if you go from the bits from let's say 20 19 all the way up till a uh, zero uh, if you look at all the bits then you'll notice that the bit of x should be less than the bit of each of the swapped elements and that's why you can just set the ith bit of x to be the minimum of uh, each of the bits of all the other swapped elements because this condition should be met whenever you're swapping the and operation takes the minimum of the elements or uh, minimum of the bits of each of the bits that's why x should be the minimum of each of the bits across all the bits and hence the bitwise and just does that exactly it just takes the minimum for each bit and or hence uh, you can just use the AND operation or, or AND operator instead of actually computing the min bit for each of the 20 bits. So instead of actually taking the min bit for each of the 20 bits, you can just do the AND of all the elements in the array. And the AND will be done with all the elements in the array which are not in the correct positions. So the code will essentially just look like for each i going from 1 to n, if pi is not equal to i, x will be x and with pi. And that's the full code. So now I'll just show you the code. For each test case, we take in the value of n. We set the answer to be, uh, the answer is uh, all ones. So 20 bits, each of which are ones. And that essentially looks like 1, 1, 1, 1 all the way up till 1 or 20 bits and this basically ensures that whenever we are taking the AND operation with answer we are always decreasing the value of answer so whenever we uh, let's say we take the AND with a number such as 0 then answer will become 0 so that's why uh, when we iterate through each element and we take in uh, pi so x is equal to pi and if pi is not equal to i then we set answer is answer and x and uh, since answer is all ones initially taking the minimum will always decrease answer because uh, in, in bits the minimum is the minimum between 1 and 0 only so that's why we set answer to be uh, the largest number with all one bits and then we always choose the value of x uh, which is not at the correct position and we set answer to be the answer and with x and in the end, we print the answer with an ender. And uh, you can verify this code gets accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the solution, uh, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.